What's up, dorks? In today's video, I'm going to tell you a story. This is not a Hallmark love story. This is a compliance love story about application lifecycle management. So let's go. So I'll give you a bit of backstory. This all began at my previous job when I wasn't even working with Power Apps or Power Automate. It all started actually when I knew nothing. I was in a facilities related role and we had some systems that were a little outdated. They weren't working well for our team. I had discovered these tools just by exploring what we had available to us within Microsoft. I found them and realized just how powerful the Power Platform could be. So I ended up dedicating my time into learning more about them. And I explained some of this to my coworkers and we all got on board and decided that I was going to create some new systems for us. We actually rewrote my job description to include something along the lines of responsible for creating new systems and automations. So what this is essentially is a citizen developer, which we toss that word around quite a bit, but that's really who it describes. Someone who doesn't have the technical background in development, but who's doing the development work. And at this time, I didn't really have a community to learn with or learn from. I felt pretty alone in all of this. Um, and I thought I was the only one at my whole organization who was using these tools. I was probably wrong, but there was no official structure in place for us to learn these and utilize them. So when I ran into a problem I didn't know, I'd search YouTube and watch Shane Young or Reza or even some Bulb Digital videos. Um, I attended some office hours uh, that Bulb puts on and I tried learning just through community resources such as videos like this. And I didn't really have a structure in place to fall back on. I was not a developer by trade. I didn't have the basics uh, down. You know, I was learning to play piano by ear, but I didn't know how to read sheet music. So don't feel alone in trying to learn all of this stuff. That's exactly what our channel is for. If you like and subscribe, you'll be able to see more of it. We've got resources on all things Power Platform, and we wanna help make you successful as a citizen developer. After I worked my way through YouTube University and had my apps out in front of say 100 folks or so, I found myself struggling to update them when I wanted to add new features. I was staying up late to do it after hours when people were less likely to be using them, or I was adding in a bunch of conditional code that allowed only me to see the updates. This might sound familiar to y'all, uh, but there is a better way to do this. After joining the team here in an official development role, I tried carrying over these bad habits from before that I had taught myself. They proved unsuccessful. I deleted an app that I had spent hours working on. I was mixing in my test data in a client's production data. It wasn't until I fully understood and kind of embraced the structure of ALM that I was able to become a better developer overall. So let's conceptualize what even is ALM. So it stands for Application Lifecycle Management, and Microsoft has plenty of documentation up on this, but really all that you need to know at its core is that it is separate lifecycle stages that your app will go through as it's being developed, and then eventually getting in front of your users. So the benefits of this would be that you're able to create new features and test them out before they get in front of your users, and you're able to perform maintenance without impacting those same people who are already using your app. So while we're gaining some things, we also have to leave some things behind. We're going to break the habit of doing after hours work and waiting for folks to sign off before we start making changes to the app they're using. We're also going to quit making hurried changes and trying to rush through the testing phase so that we can get things in front of them faster. And we're not going to take things offline. Everything's still going to be live and people can still interact with it while we're working on updates.
So now that I've introduced you to my new love, ALM, why don't I tell you a bit about him? So how are we gonna make this work within the Power Platform? Essentially, what you need is a separate copy for each life stage of your application or your solution. And you also need a separate data source, so you're not mixing in real data with testing data. Microsoft has some tools in place that will help facilitate ALM. The first is environments and the other is solutions. And so Mike actually already has a video out on environments and I've got one out on solutions. You should go check those out to become more familiar with them. They're great tools when making copies of your apps. <laughs> These are worthwhile tools to get familiar with. So we'll link those videos in the description below. So along with each of our copies of our apps, we need separate data sources for each one. So whether you're using Dataverse, which is my personal favorite, or a SharePoint list, you can do this with a variety of options. If you're using something other than Dataverse, you should go check out Mike's environment variable blog on how to leverage those between your different environments. So we've got copies, we've got data sources. How many do we need? Really, that depends on all of the different stages that your company may have. But as a basic rule, we tend to follow three of them. We've got dev, which is for development, test, which is for testing, and prod, which is for production. It's the real app. The first stage that you'll encounter is dev, which stands for development. And that's where you're gonna do all your work. This is the only place where you make updates to your app. You don't work in the other environments or in the other lifecycle stages just in dev. That's the only place you make updates. After you've got something in development that you like and you're ready to get in front of folks, then you copy it over to your test environment. Once it's in test, you invite a couple folks in to try to break the app. At least that's how I describe it. Um, what they're trying to do is find bugs, point out flaws, and maybe give you some suggestions on what things you can improve. So there you iterate back and forth and create new updates based on their feedback in dev, and then you push those to test. And once we are there, we just try to break it. Once you and your test users are all satisfied with what you have in the test environment, you can take it and put it into the production environment. This is your final product. It's where folks are gonna interact with it and actually do their jobs in it. We're not putting fake submissions in, we're really using it over here. So now that we've got our app out in production, at least a version one, we still need to make some updates and do some maintenance on it. What does this look like? So we go back to our dev environment. We go back to development and we make all of our changes here that we want to update. And once those are ready, we push them back out to test where folks try to break them. If it's still not ready, we make more updates in dev and send them back out. So we just work between these two until it's absolutely certain this is what we want. And then we'll bring that same copy over and overwrite the production copy. And now users see everything fleshed out. It's all been tested and we can trust it. So let's take it back to where you are today. If all of this sounds familiar to you, you're making updates late at night, you're adding in conditions to only allow yourself to see something, or you're just having a frustrating time making changes to something that folks are already using, try out ALM. Now that you understand this concept at its very core, go use some of those resources we have for you. Don't feel alone in this journey. Go watch my other video on solutions, check out Mike's on environment variables and environments themselves, and go practice ALM. See if you can get your stuff all the way through each stage in development. And if you can't and you get stuck, let us know and we're gonna help you out. I think that citizen developers should be able to borrow from professional developers and implement some of these processes in a way that works for them. So while you're looking up these YouTube videos for how to solve these niche problems um, and create these very specific solutions, let's back up and get a more global view of things and learn how to have a more successful development process as a whole. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I can try it one more time if you need, but I am sure there's a lot there. All right. 
brute force their way through. Like, subscribe, do all the things. We love it. I love it personally, actually. <laughs> all right, let's get a take of that. Okay. Um, all the